they were still using mm -hmm. Navi. Yeah. But whether it was personal or it was yes, like, that is a really really important observation um, that that you make, um, and I think that's one of the ways that, in particular with Avatar, that um, like mainstream power dynamics and ideals gets replicated, right? Um, one of the things that, um, <clears throat> that particularly when we were working on Octavius Brood, um, that, uh, that each of us, you know, tried to work on and think about is this idea of kind of moving beyond diversity, um, particularly in speculative works. Um, and this idea of moving people who are marginalized into the center. Um, and I think both Avatar and District 9 are really good examples of the opposite of that. Um, and, and, I, and, and particularly for some of the, some, some of the exact things that you say, uh, observations that you have um, about Avatar. And similar, there was a, a comment earlier about District 9 and like really feeling like, I in, in District 9, I felt... I felt so empathetic for the prompt. Um, I wanted them to have a revolution, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and and I think in one, particularly after watching both of them and kind of thinking about them um, uh, in conjunction with each other, and some of the ways, particularly if you watch both, and I encourage you to watch both, uh, partially because they kind of tell on each other. And I think that was very, it's very good choice on uh, on, uh, on Dr. Laws's part to pair those two movies. Uh, in her analysis in that first chapter, uh, and I don't think that's an accident, those movies tell on each other. Um, and, what, and both of them, I think, represent missed opportunities for moving the margins to the center. For those of you who watch District 9, what I want you to do, just for a moment, imagine that story from Christopher's point of view. What does that change? 